And th that uh, really shows how much ground you can lose at a feeding station. Every metre is important <laughs> to lose uh, two or three metres at the end of a race like this. The Americans come through very quickly there. Steve Spence. And uh, he's perhaps running uh, a more even pace race. He's come from a long way back. He certainly run the last 10 kilometers faster than the rest. And he looks strong, he looks comfortable. He's passing Castillo of Mexico. He's still got his drink. He's had enough of, of that, but he was carrying it for quite a while, taking on board whatever liquid he could and looking as though he's bouncing along the road. And when he looks down the road, he'll see that leading group. Unfortunately, you see a lot of cars in between him and the leading group, which is, I don't think that's terribly necessary. But Bordin back into the lead. Taniguchi looking controlled, looking calm, and Sala just drifting in behind them. It's quite startling how much ground Spencer's made up, in fact, because he's almost in touch with that group. How hard he's had to work to get there, one's not sure, but he's looking very strong. at the feeding station, they're back together. Taniguchi, Sala, Shinohara, Bordin, Gisales, Betiol, and Europe. An interesting comparison here is the, is the speed that the men are going with the speed that the women went in the women's marathon the other day. If you look at the, at the average times of the top 10 marathons run of all time by men and women, the difference is about 15 minutes. And if you look at the race here today, they're looking as though they're going to run about 2 hours 15 minutes. The women ran 2 hours and 30 minutes, so it looks as though that 15-minute gap between the best men and the best women is the one that's going to come into play again today. the stadium about three and a half miles left I think Bettyol is the only one in the group who's conscious that the American is closing them down and he, he keeps looking over his shoulder and, and noticing the American who looks strong and controlled and look at the gap he's opened on Castillo in the last few kilometers or the last kilometer really and he's, he's looking looking good moving very sweetly well he's got them within sight and that must be a heartening uh, experience for him and he's looking very confident too but you know when i talked to Bordin the other day he said to be the to win all the gold medals that are available in a sport is, is a great dream of his he's won the olympic games he's twice won the european championships and the only other medal available to him is a world championship gold medal he said if i could win that i would settle happily and if i took my place in history then that would be a pleasure for me well, Spence is closing. He's still got uh, an awkward uh, distance to catch up to get to the leaders. I wonder how aware the leaders are of Spence's uh, surge. Steve Monaghetti going through the motions. And I think the leaders are totally unaware of Spence. Indeed, may not be able to do a great deal about it either at the moment. I wonder what he'll do when he gets there. Assuming he does get there, he looks as though he will. I wonder if he'll just settle into the group or whether he'll go straight past them. And if he do, if he did, apart from Betty Ollie, he'd take them all by surprise. Taniguchi splits off on his own, goes to the right-hand side of the road, and then begins to scamper again, begins to run hard. Actually, Spence is a real surprise to us. We didn't think the Americans were as strong these days as they used to be in the marathon, but Taniguchi, well, I'm not sure he's aware that he's being, they're being caught from behind, but he's certainly giving it another go. Well, surely this is the break that uh, they need. This will surely split that pack. But no, 
Yurik's back. And Spence is right there now. And by comparison, he's travelling very, very much more strongly. Well, he's run his own race, and it's paid off. A winner of the 1990 Columbus Marathon. We've seen more on, on the track over 10,000 metres. Last 5,000 metres now. And Spence has unexpectedly joined them. And certainly it underlines that the leaders are going through a difficult patch because they've slowed down considerably. And, and when you saw them scramble at the feeding station for sponges and water, you could tell the effect of the, of the temperature and the conditions they've had on them. And I'm beginning to have my doubts about Jolindo Bordin. You can see he's desperate to get water on board. He took up the lead position. He tried to stretch them. It didn't have much effect. And now there's just a few more yards than I would feel comfortable with if I was Jolindo Bordin's coach, or in fact, Jolindo himself. And Spence is right behind him. Gisselaise is the latest man in real trouble. Right at the back of that group. The way Spence has come through them, he's probably surprised to find himself getting to them so easily. But now he's there. He's really there with a big chance because he's the man who's been traveling fastest. He's obviously the strongest. He hasn't had the uh, pressure of battling with the others out front. And certainly the others, well, they've been taking so much out of themselves, watching each other, worried about the opposition. They've every right to be. He's got four away, but Spence is in the gap in fifth place. The four clear, the two Japanese, Kanaguchi and Shinohara, Sala of Djibouti, Yurik of Poland. Well, this is Taniguchi's second effort. The first one, he got a few yards, he increased the pace for a little while, couldn't keep it going, going all the way, settled back into the group, looks as though he's gathered himself, and he does look as though he's accelerating. He does look as though he's padding along that road a little bit quicker than he was before, and the gap to Spence, well, Spence maybe has run the... The, late, the last 10 kilometers faster than anybody else, but can he run the next five kilometers faster than anyone else? Because that's the real test. What might happen here is that he could bring Bordin back into the race than uh, Betiol, because Bordin's latched onto him. Gisselet's, well, we've said it uh, once or twice before in various uh, marathons, but uh, when you come apart, things really come undone. It happens very, very quickly. He's lost a lot of ground. About uh, a thousand meters back, he was with this group. He's now some considerable way behind them. Sala of Djibouti keeps looking around to see who else is in contention. Hasn't made his effort yet. But is he gathering himself for that one big effort? And I think it'll only take one big effort by any one of these to win this race. Because I think you'll find the rest of them are really struggling. And look at Bordin working hard, trying to get back to the group. He knows he needs to be with that group when they approach that stiff climb towards the stadium if he's going to have any chance. And that may be the testing ground. It's about 120 meters long, and it climbs fairly steeply. It's the kind of hill that when you're out training, you're not going to notice, but in the last stages of a marathon, you certainly will notice it. And Bordin's making every effort he possibly can. I think Spence's presence was just what Bordin needed. It gives him the opportunity to get back to the group. He'd be very surprised that it was Spence. He probably won't even know who he is because his reputation in the marathon hasn't traveled that far. But Bordin, struggling, I think, working very, very hard, and is the medal, the one medal that's eluded him, is it disappearing with those four athletes ahead of him? Two Japanese, surprised to see Hurek there all this time, surprised to see Spence right next to Bordin, but Sala poised in that group. Well, they've got two miles now to sort it out, about two miles. Sala in third place, the 
oldest man in the leading group in the well in almost in the race in fact he's 34 an army lieutenant and Taniguchi makes another break very low arm carriage and Salah's gone with him Shinohara trying to take a short line obviously knows the course And this will be disheartening for Borden and Spence. They were beginning to get back, and then Taniguchi's gone again. Good tactics, though, by the Japanese. It's the right thing to do, and it, this is the break that matters now, surely. Well, he's putting himself into a medal position. Is it going to be the gold medal position? Well, we'll, we'll wait. And we're as excited as anyone else, and we'll find out. And the Japanese are really supporting them strongly from the side of the road. And Borden, you can see almost a look of desperation on his face as he looks down the road. There are not many yards between him and the lead, but is that a winning lead by Taniguchi? Because Sala looked as though he'd covered it, but when we look at it from that angle, well, maybe he's given him a few more yards than, we, than he would want. And then a glance over his shoulder by Sala, maybe he's struggling too. And there's that one hill, which is uh, they're going to approach very, very soon. I think that'll be the teller, because when you get to the top of the hill, you can see the stadium, and then their spirits will revive. Well, Taniguchi has been the man on the attack in the latter stages of this race. He surged twice before, it didn't come off. He contented himself with a, a way to breathe her in the pack, but now he's gone for home, and he's gone for gold. And he's got a quite important gap. Very, very experienced athlete. He's 31. He was only ninth, by the way, in the Tokyo Marathon earlier this year, but he's found his form at the right time. A winner in Rotterdam last year. He won on this course in 87 and 89. He won the London Marathon in 87. And as long ago as 1985, he won in the Beppu Marathon. Shutting out the emotion and pain, shutting out his feelings, concentrating now on the drive for the stadium. Betiol leading the chasing group. Spence, having done all that good running, now finds the leaders have found new life and have gone away. And this is a decisive break without any doubt at all. Taniguchi leading, Sala in second place. Well, he'd give anything to win this one. And is this the winning effort? It certainly is an effort because it's split the field apart. There's only Sala, whose spirits have revived because he was actually looking to settle into the second group. But there's Taniguchi battling now, sprinting almost, looking over his shoulder, and he sees happy. He's happy to see the daylight between them. They're coming up to 40 kilometers, 39 and a half kilometers there that we are now, and he's pulled away very, very significantly. This has got to be a tremendous win for the host nation if he can make it. The marathon is the one event they wanted to win, and it looks as if Taniguchi can bring their uh, hopes alive and come home in front. It's hurting, but it's a winning run. And surely now, he'll be able to keep going. Just over 2,000 metres left. Sala in second place, the bronze medalist in the Olympic Games. And he got silver in this race four years ago. The race for third place. Shinohara in third place, so Japan one and three. And if you look at the record of the Japanese, well, in 1936 at this level, Kitty's son, who was born in Korea but re represented Japan, won the marathon in the Olympic Games. And the only other medals, gold medals they've ever won in their history, have been in the triple jump. So, marathon running, 1991, in Japan, by a Japanese, the most significant move in the history of marathon running in this country. And you can't believe that one of the three Japanese would have got it so right, but he certainly looks as though he has. 
He's got a tremendous marathon background. He's got 2,000 metres left. In fact, he's got the seventh fastest time in history at 2 hours, 7 minutes, 40 seconds. Set that in the Beijing Marathon in 1988. For this, undoubtedly, the greatest run, if not the fastest run, of his life. Well, they went through 40 kilometers there in 2 hours, 8 minutes and 22 seconds. In my calculation, it looks as though that was a faster kilometer, a faster 5 kilometer split. 16 minutes and 15 seconds. They've been slowing before then. And I think the burst in the, in the last kilometer there, from 38 to 39, was the one that did the damage. Shinohara running for bronze at the moment. Possibility of silver. Europe behind him, the pole, is making no impression on the Japanese. Don't forget, this is the man who came into the race as a late replacement because the first choice was injured. Sala. Well, it was a brave break he made. All the pain of the marathon showing. On the sort of day on which no one should be asked to run a marathon. That's right, but he won't even be considering that now. I think there's just one hurdle for him now, up that, up that hill. They turn, they turn, and they climb towards the stadium. It's gradually climbing, and then all of a sudden, there's a burst. But he looks to be full of running. He's battling with his running. He's accelerating, and he knows he is. He's obviously in tremendous pain, but I think the, the emotion will overcome the pain today. He looks as though he's being chased. You know, you would think the way he's running, that he, would, that he thought that someone was catching him. When we look down the road, the second athlete, Ahmed Salah, just turning the corner. And all he's got to do now is hold himself. And Shinohara's in trouble for the bronze medal. It's Spence now of America and Yurik, and Spence has got away from boarding. And Spence goes into third place. Almost a known American now, has come right through from the back in the closing stages, is in the bronze medal position, but there are three battling for it, and Shinohara is having a bad, bad patch. The powerful pole, Hurek, trying to stay with the American. And this must be desperate for Shinohara. On home ground, look to have the bronze, and now he's out of the medal. He's Sala in second place, and he's as concerned about being caught for third as he is about chasing Taniguchi. Taniguchi wants that gold medal. He knows it can be his. It's between him and the road and the last one and a half, or he's almost the last mile now. And look at the crowds that have swelled since they started two hours ago, six o'clock in the morning. It's now 10 past eight here and the route is being lined. What a greeting he'll get when he comes into the stadium. And there you can see the stadium. Well, this man deserved to become world champion. He was brave enough to take it on. He's running through pain without any doubt at all but he's not conceding anything. And there's no doubt at all, he's going away from the rest. The important thing now is to keep on and keep it together. He's getting faster though, look at him, he's really, he's, he's almost racing himself. He'll be tell he must be telling himself, you know, go faster, go faster, they're catching you behind because he's spurring himself on and he doesn't need to. Now this is the climb, this is the one that I told you, I talked about. You can see it's affecting him. He's battling up that hill, but he's getting there. And he's within sight of the stadium entrance. And what a welcome sight that must be. They've been watching on television. They've left their homes to come out and cheer a Japanese victory. The host nation is going to win the gold medal in the event they enjoy and love so much the marathon.
from the shadows into the sunshine. The Olympic Stadium awaits. Hiromi Taniguchi. A lonely figure on the track. He's run right away from the rest in the closing stages. He's looking back, but there's no danger. Sala in second place, the silver medalist from uh, Djibouti. Got to hang on because the third man's in the stadium as well. Taniguchi looks across to see the uh, second place man, Sala. And so the World Championship gold medal beckons for Hiromi Taniguchi, 31. A winner in Rotterdam, a winner in Tokyo, a winner in London, a winner in Beppu, but now the greatest victory of all. The World Championship on home soil and the gold medal in the 1991 Marathon World Championship goes to Hiromi Taniguchi, on home soil. Two hours 15. The time unimportant. The title everything. Sada coming in for the silver medal. The second place he occupied four years ago. And winning seems to elude him. So a silver for the Army Lieutenant from Djibouti. And in third place, totally unexpected, came right through in the closing stages, Steve Spence, the American, takes the bronze. A victory there, or even pace running, I suspect. Jurek of Poland in fourth place. The man who finished third this year in London. Then, Shinohara of the host nation, fifth. So, so close to the medals. Betiol is the next man in in sixth place of Italy, having left his more famous teammate Bordin behind. And Bordin's dropped an awful lot. It's Castillo coming in next. He's in seventh place. Joy unrestrained. the pain and the tiredness disappears when you win. Well, I hope they're presenting the gold medal this afternoon when the stadium is full because you'll get a roar from the crowd for that. The greatest day in the history of Japanese running, surely. And there, Jolindo board in. He gave it every shot. He gave it his best shot. He tried everything he could, but he found out that today a Japanese and the Japanese conditions got the better of him. Finished very slowly indeed. Just underlining again that uh, when you start to uh, really suffer, what a struggle it is over the closing stages and how much ground you lose. That photograph will be on the front page of a few of the newspapers tomorrow. We won't be able to read the words around them, but we certainly know what the picture means. He just broke two hours uh, 15, two hours 14 minutes 56 seconds. Just broke two hours 15. Well, a World Championship run lives in the memory of all who take part in these events. But uh, today's conditions and the way this race has been run will last in the memory of these athletes forever. It'll be etched perhaps on their uh, careers in future because they've suffered very hard physically. Steve Modigetti of Australia. Well, that's the toughest Steve's ever found in a marathon. And that's his lowest position, actually in his whole marathon career and he'll probably have found it so oppressive those conditions 
And when you come to a championship in your best physical shape that you've ever been in and finish like he's done, well, that, that disappointment will last with Steve for a long, long time. And there's the Ethiopian, Gisele's the first Ethiopian. McConnon was the one who we expected to figure, but we haven't seen him for a while now. Sam Carey of Britain. But we're not sure how many other runners are on the track, but that's a good run by Sam Carey, and he looks, as, he looks to be rejoicing with it. He set off very cautiously. He's overcome the conditions. Dobler of Germany finishing now. Dobler's 10th, Monaghetti's 11th. And then maybe Sam Carey, the first Briton, a very disappointed Steve Monaghetti. What a good run by Sam Carey, though. He's come through uh, running at his own pace. We think he's about 12. We're remote from the stadium. But uh, he's had a fine run in these conditions. Sam's 26, a member of the Warrington Athletic Club. 30th in the London Marathon. This is only his fourth marathon, by the way. Ran it his own way, and the tactics paid off. It certainly did. My word, he's enjoying it. He's entitled to that. Well, he'd be, be relieved that he got over because he must have been so concerned, so apprehensive about the conditions that he used to meet. Run about two hours, 20 minutes, and on this course, in those conditions, on a day like this, in his first major championship, well, he deserves a lie down. Well, he could be proud of that. Peter Mayer of Canada finishing now. If he's the next athlete, he'd be in 13th place. And he should celebrate, that's a good run. Ahmed Saleh there of Djibouti. He must wonder what he's got to do to win. Second in this World Championship, second in the last World Championship, third in 